saying who joins. Hi everyone. Let me know once you sign on. Got one person. Could you let me know if this is, if I'm on the Girl Scouts of Wilderness Road page? I just want to make sure I'm doing the live video through them and not my personal account. Wow, that looks bad. I need to turn around. It's just the uh, light from the window. Mm-hmm. Hey Shannon. Shannon, can you do me a favor and Shannon, can you do me a favor and Okay, so I am on the Girl Scout of Wilderness Road Facebook page, correct? Okay, I see it now. Okay, good. I was afraid that I was messing that up cuz I'm not the best at technology. So I'm just waiting. Okay, awesome. We have 16 people, Michael, so we can get started. Okay, okay so do you want to get me? I guess we'll get in the tent here. Michael's going to take over. All right, we'll turn around. Oh, yeah, you got to hold it. <laughs> okay, how does this angle look? Looks good. All right, so hello, Girl Scouts. Um, let me know if you can't really hear me that well. I know I'm kind of far away, but, um, <laughs> welcome to Backpacking Basics. I'm super excited about this. Um, we have a lot to cover. I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible. Uh, first off, my name is Laura Gruen. I work in the Lexington office, the Lexington office. Um, I work in the camp department. My... Uh, title is Outdoor Program Coordinator. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing we're going to cover about Backpacking Basics is basically planning ahead and preparing for your trip. So I'm going to go... Okay, I'm looking at my notes here. Alright, so first uh, you want to know where you're going to be going on your trip and you want to be doing uh, research for it as well so you can um, research for uh, places to backpack online um, a great place in Kentucky is the Red River Gorge Daniel Boone National Forest uh, London has some good areas around Cumberland Lake Michael and I have backpacked around that area before the Chateau Trace goes through Kentucky. Uh, that's a great trail. It's a longer trail. It's, remember the mileage, Michael? The shell towing? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It goes through several states, though. I know. I think it's like, I want to say it's over, a little over 200 miles. So some people hike it in sections. We've done the section in the gorge, and we've also done the section in, um, around Cumberland Lake. <laughs> I apologize for him. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm gonna I'm going to tell you more about some cool places that you can check out uh, other than Kentucky. We've been to other places out west that are super awesome. We'll talk about that more at the end. So yes, when you're planning ahead and preparing, you also want to look at the weather forecast for the weekend or the week that you're going because you need to know what kind of gear to bring with you. So you need to know if it's going to be really cold or if it's, you know, a chance of rain or if it's going to be really sunny. And that all uh, makes a huge difference with when you're packing your bag for your trip. Um, another important thing is to plan out your meals. So... Oh, can you uh, talk a little bit louder? Okay. Well, come closer then. Okay. I feel like I'm screaming already. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So another, can you all hear me now? Is it better? I'm sure it is. Okay. So um, planning out your meals is another important thing um, and snacks. So you're going to know how many days you're going to be out on your trail. Look at Yossi right now. I'm sorry. He's just, 
<laughs> just the view of him right now is like checking out squirrels at the bird feeder. All I see is his bottom. <laughs> okay, so sorry, I got distracted. But planning out your meals, you're gonna have um, you know enough meals for however many days you're gonna be out on the trail. So if you're doing a weekend trip, then you need uh, to plan breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. You don't want to pack too much food because uh, it makes a difference with the weight that you're carrying. So you want to pack just enough and you'll know yourself how much, um, how many calories that you intake on a regular basis. And you're going to be intaking a little more calories because you're going to be burning a lot of calories because you're going to be moving a lot. So we're going to go over here to my table of stuff. Okay, so the first thing, ah. all right, so the first thing I want to cover is um, some clothes that you would bring on your trip. All right, so I'm going to pull up some of my stuff and talk about it. I wanted to cover some gear in this. Um, I've turned into kind of a gear junkie. Um, I, when I first started backpacking and I get into the outdoors, I used really cheap gear and then I s tried out nicer gear and I don't think I'll ever go back <laughs> to the really cheap stuff because I mean getting nice gear is awesome. It is more expensive but it lasts a long time and it just is lighter and it packs down smaller so there's a lot of benefits to getting spending a little extra money on nice gear. Um, outdoor clothes are really expensive. I'm sure a lot of you already know that. But, um, so like I said before, if you go on a trip and you're expecting rain, this is um, a great rain jacket. It's a marmot. This is actually a child's jacket. Um, I'll just get like a large child's jacket, like rain jacket sometimes, because it's a little cheaper than getting an adult size but it works just as uh, well. So this is my rain jacket, has a hood and everything, keeps me dry. I also have marmot rain pants, but I cannot locate those. I feel like I left them in Colorado on my last ski trip, which I really hope I didn't, but I can't find them anywhere. So marmot is a great brand. Um, I own a lot of marmot stuff. My tent's actually a marmot tent. And then um, right here is my down jacket. And this is Patagonia. So there's the uh, logo. And that probably looks familiar. Patagonia is really well known. It's one of the more expensive ones. Yvonne Chouinard, um, he's the one that started Patagonia. So he has like a big business and he sells other gear and a lot of clothing. Uh, this is a very, very warm jacket. You can get this jacket with a hood or without a hood. Um, I got mine with the hood so that I can sleep with it when I'm in the tent and put the hood up and it keeps my head nice and warm. But yes, there's down feathers in this. Um, this is not the best jacket to wear when you're like uh, bushwhacking or like you can wear it when you're hiking but you're going to be pretty warm with your big backpack on and you'll probably end up taking this off. So um, in the material, it's tough, like it will last a long time, but it's also very fragile. So like it's kind of torn right there. And when it gets a little torn, the feathers start coming out. So these jackets, you mainly want it for at night when you are hanging out or in, around the campfire or eating dinner when it's starting to get really chilly out. So, Could you explain uh, what bushwhacking is? Did I say that right? Bushwhacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bushwhacking. <laughs> it's um, basically if, I mean, we've done it before where we've gotten lost out on the trail and you basically have to go off trail to find the actual trail and you're going through a lot of um, tall, like growth bushes and um, some people will take a, uh, what's it called? The like blade thing. A machete. Machete. <laughs> so it's like, um, yeah, but some people will have a machete to like kind of cut the um, 
bushes down to get them out of the way, but it's bushwhacking is um, something you want to avoid, so that's why you always want to stay on the trails. But like I said before, Michael and I have gotten lost before um, in the backcountry, so we've had to bushwhack before. So yeah. Um, okay, and then moving on to pants. Um, these are Copen, is that how you say it? Are we still on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so these, that's right, Copen? Is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure. Looks right. Yeah, looks right to me too. <laughs> so uh, these are great pants. I got these at Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, they've lasted me years and years. Uh, they're nice and warm. They're great to wear in the winter time. Um, it almost has a, like a uh, felt, so it's like fuzzy on the inside, but not really thick, so it's still pretty airy. But these are great um, outdoor hiking pants. They're a little stretchy, so um, if you need to like climb up some rocks, do some rock scrambling on a trail, because that happens sometimes where trails get a little rough, you're able to lift your legs up high and um, do that. So yes, these are great pants that I love to wear. Yeah, those are breathable and they dry really quick yes. too, don't they? Yes, they also, yes, good point, Michael. They are breathable and they dry really quickly. Uh, this is another pair of pants. These are better for the summertime. These are even more breathable. Uh, I got these at a thrift store uh, in Durango. So a lot of these clothes I got at thrift stores. So they're like used outdoor clothes. Um, but yeah, same thing with these. They're pretty stretchy. Uh, you can move around in them better. Uh, I know some people hike in jeans. I personally don't like to hike in jeans because they're just so tight and if they get wet, they take forever to dry. Uh, this type of material, um, which, let me see what kind of material. Yeah, so it's uh, nylon and uh, spandex. So that's material that dries quickly. So it's gonna, um, help you like if you're really sweaty then it's gonna dry that sweat away or if it rains a little bit on you your pants will be dry um, by the next day and so here's my short sleeve shirt I always like to take a short sleeve shirt with me this is Eddie Bauer brand right here and um, they sell pretty affordable outdoor clothing this is also that uh, nice material that dries quickly, so it's gonna it's made out of nylon and probably has some spandex in there too because it's pretty stretchy. So I like to take that with me, and then this is an REI pullover. Uh, this is a nice, um, like warm but also airy material. You can see the inside of it right there. Look like little squares. So that's just makes it more breathable and um, kind of wicks your sweat away. But yeah, this is a great pullover that I like to wear when I'm backpacking. Um, this is, so I don't wear cotton underwear whenever I go backpacking. I wear more spandex. It's stretchier. Um, I like never get wedgies when I wear this, which is really nice. So you don't have to worry about that. And um, I also wanted to talk about socks. So I have had experience wearing socks that are not like actual hiking socks. They just are cheap socks. And I've gotten some pretty mean blisters. Like, I mean, huge, really painful. Um, so socks make a huge difference. Uh, this, uh, my favorite brand socks are the Fits. So I have several Fits socks and you can find these in your outdoor stores. Um, I'm sure they sell them at Dick's and Cabela's. What's the other outdoor store in Lexington? It's, um, it's not Benchmark. Um, we always forget Benchmark's like the old one. 
Yeah, it'll come to me in a second. Okay. <laughs> We're having a brain fart. But, <laughs> so this is fit socks. Um, and they have really cute patterns. Um, I'm wearing a pair right here. So this is a great hiking sock. Um, this is another one that I really like, Smart Wool. Uh, this one is very warm. It's, I mean, made out of wool. So it's great to wear in the winter time. And a lot of the times I will bring, if I'm doing like a weekend backpacking trip, I'll bring um, two pairs of socks. So I'll have like a clean pair for each day if I can fit them in there. And then at night I'll have um, like a really warm pair of socks to wear on my feet in the sleeping bag. And then... <laughs> Alright, so uh, what you should sleep in. Now, if you have a really good sleeping bag, a really warm sleeping bag, um, it is better to not wear a bunch of layers. Um, I used to layer up and wear like three different layers when I would sleep, but I have a zero degree down sleeping bag now, and all I have to wear is this... Um, these like thin wool lights and they're just basically long underwear. So this is all I wear is this and then I'll wear the pants and then I'll wear like, see my pants? And then I'll wear some smart wool socks with it and I am like toasty. And sometimes I'll wear my um, down jacket too if I'm really cold and also have down pants and I should have pull those out but yeah those are really fun to have um, and then uh, having a hat for when you're backpacking in the cold is really great because um, you're gonna wear it at night and probably early in the morning and you might even want to sleep in it um, gloves you don't need a big heavy pair of gloves you can just get a light pair of gloves these are black diamond gloves so that's what the black diamond symbol looks like they also make climbing gear and they make clothing but it's just a nice like warm light glove and it's got a good material that's not going to tear um these things are cool this is a uh i think it's a is it a buff i think that's what they call it think so. Yes. I was going to say Banff, but that's a national park. <laughs> so this is a buff. Um, these things are really handy. I like to, so it can be a neck warmer. So you can wear it around your neck to kind of warm your neck like a scarf. I um, also use it when I go skiing to cover my face when I'm on the ski lift. When I'm going up on the ski lift, so you can cover it like that. Or a good coronavirus mask. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can also use it as a headband to pull your hair back if you are having a really bad hair day um, or if you're about to make a campfire and you don't want to burn your hair. Um, and then you can also just completely pull your hair back like this, like that. And then you can also make a little beanie out of it. So if I turn it inside out, and then I just kind of twist it on the top. And flip it back over. I got myself a little beanie. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty fun. I like these things. I have several of them. Okay, so that's my, those are my clothes. Going over some clothes. Put these back in. I gotta find my notes now. Okay, so. Oh yeah, last thing. Um, okay, hiking boots. This is one of the most important things. You want a nice pair of hiking boots. I know that Walmart sells hiking boots. Um, I would advise not to get boots at Walmart because, I mean, especially if you're going to do 
a long trail. Um, if you're just starting out, it might be okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. If you're just starting out, then that's fine. See if you like it. And if you, if it's something you really enjoy, backpacking and being outside doing really long hikes, then um, definitely spend money on a good pair of hiking boots. Uh, these are Keens. So there's what the brand looks like or the logo looks like. Uh, these things are awesome. This is my second pair of Keens. Um, I got these right before we went to the Grand Canyon our second time. So uh, we hiked rim to or I, I hiked rim to rim in these and I mean they look totally fine. I've done other trips in these too. So they hold up really well. Uh, they're great boots. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kings are like the ones that I always get. And Marmot has boots too, but I do you have Marmot boots? No, I have Keens also. Yeah, Michael and I are Keen fans. Yeah, they're so, pretty affordable for. Yeah, I can't remember how much those were, but they're a little over a hundred. Yeah, like the same price as a good pair of running shoes. Yeah, so it's worth the money though. Trust me. All right, so let's go over here. Okay, so we're gonna talk cover cooking a little bit. Let me grab okay, that boots up. All right, I know that we, I don't know if you saw the outdoor cooking video, but we um, talked about my camp stove in that. So if you wanna come down low with me, Michael. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is uh, my pocket rocket. This is my small, stove that I like to take with me. So that's what um, the stove looks like, but I need my little propane fuel to light it. Alright, so this is my pot that I always boil my water with or cook my dinner with. There's still a little bit of juice in there. So this you just, you can get this um, in any outdoor store as well. I've had this thing for many years, so the ones in the outdoor store, they might look a little different. They might look, you know, because it's probably changed the look of them. You bring these little prongs back, and then all you need for this is a lighter. I'm going to go ahead and turn the gas on some so I can it. All right, so there's the stove. You can control the heat, make it go up higher or lower, and then to turn it off, you completely turn it to the right. I'm going to let it cool down before I undo all that. Um, this is my uh, GSI pot. So uh, these last a very long time. This is my little uh, case for it. And then my pot comes with a lid. And it also comes with a uh, drinking cup. So you can put hot drinks in there. And then this is like a um, just a piece of fabric that goes around it to keep your hand from getting too hot when you're holding your hot drink. So yes. So I keep... Um, my little propane uh, fuel inside here just to save uh, space. So that's a big thing with backpacking. If you have like something like this that's taking up, you know, awkward space, you can stuff things in there like gloves or, you know, just things that'll fit in there. Um, that way you're making enough space for all the rest of your things gotta get creative with that kind of stuff. Okay, so since we talked about the stove, let's talk a little bit about the food. So, for snacks, um, I mean, you have like 
we have a book here that tells you how to basically meal prep. There's a lot of recipes in here that, um, I mean, there's like granola bars and things like that that you can make at home and then um, take with you on your trip. So like that is an option. You can look up stuff online. There's also dinners in here that you can make at home and take on your trip. I think a lot of these require for you to have a uh, dehydrator, which uh, we don't. So um, this dehydrated meals are really popular with backpacking. But what we do is we usually get um, uh, protein bars, like energy bars for our trips. So it's really important to uh, find protein bars um, because you're going to need a lot of protein. This has 10 grams of protein, so that's pretty good. Um, also having trail mix is a good snack. Um, other snacks that, we take, that we've taken with us, uh, we'll take those like crackers and like canned tuna or canned chicken salad and you like smear it on a cracker. Um, so we've had that with like a protein bar or like trail mix and that's, you know, our lunch. It's a really small lunch, but it's something to keep you going. Um, and then for breakfast meals, uh, this is actually a freeze dried breakfast meal. So this is a Tex-Mex uh, breakfast taco and this is uh, packet gourmet. These are uh, people that um, make these freeze dried meals at home. So it has directions on the back here what you do. You put um, water in here and you let it sit for a couple minutes and stir it. Um, this one it looks like you cook it in a pan after the water's been sitting in it for a couple minutes. Uh, to warm it up and then you have a nice breakfast so this is uh, we found them online so you can go online they also have uh, lunch and dinner options uh, that are really good so this is what we used when we went backpacking in the Grand Canyon uh, this is another breakfast thing um, Mountain House you've probably seen these in Walmart these are uh, I think these are the best freeze dried meals that you can get. Uh, there's other brands. There's like Backpackers Pantry. Um, we've tried their stuff before, but we really enjoy Mountain House's stuff. And they have um, all kinds of good breakfast uh, scrambled like skillets. And they even have um, biscuits and gravy. And they have a lot of good dinner options. So all you do with it. Is you just tear it open you take the uh, oxygen absorber pack it out you um, usually boil water and then you pour it in there stir it seal it up let it sit for like nine minutes and then it's good to eat so it's pretty cool yeah and there's not much cleanup because all you use is a spoon exactly yes there's not much cleanup um, I do want to mention if you uh, do yeah you can eat these out of the bag so that's what's really awesome so you can eat them out of the bag and then any like leftover trash you have you can put it in this bag and zip it up and then pack out your trash with you so it also serves as a trash bag um, but if you eat these you are gonna want to get a long spoon like this because <laughs> it is very hard to eat it with a short spoon like this your hand's gonna be in the bag, basically. This is a spork, um, which is great, but uh, it just doesn't work that well for these. So getting a nice long spoon for it. Um, this came from REI. Um, yeah, and there's an REI in uh, Cincinnati, right? Yeah, there's one in Cincinnati. Yes, there's one in Cincinnati. So that's our closest one, if you ever wanna go and check it out. Um, also, we like to take, uh, if you're a coffee drinker, just get instant coffee. 
to drink. I know it's like, ew, gross, instant coffee, but I mean, hey, it works. And when you're out in the back country, everything tastes amazing and you just appreciate everything more. Yeah, you can get some fancier options like a hydro press or something, but it just adds extra weight and takes up more space in your backpack. Yes. Thank you, Michael. Um, also these, so these are other space savers. Um, you can drink hot drinks out of this. This is called like a squishy bowl. So as you see, it squishes down. Um, it doesn't take up much space. You can like stuff it in your pack and it'll save you some space. This is another um, collapsible cup here. So that's nice because once you're done, you can just flatten it and then you put it in your pack. Here's a bowl right here. Yeah. All right, I think that's all the stuff. Okay, and then, um, yes, don't forget, you also want to take um, some soap and, is that your phone? No. You want to take some soap and then a sponge to wash your dishes out with. So we just took a really small sponge. Ew, we need to throw this out. <laughs> okay, but we just take a small sponge and we cut it up really small and um, Michael, you know, we put it in this little plastic container, uh, punch some ho holes in there so that it can air out. Um, Camp Suds, you can get that at any outdoor store. And that's kind of a big bottle, so a lot of the times we um, put some of it in this smaller bottle when we go backpacking, so that way uh, it's not taking up so much room. So there's a lot of stuff here um, that you're jamming in your packs about how much do you think this weighs when you have it all packed up? Um, uh, for our last trip, our last trip, um, we were camping for four nights, and I think my pack was only, did we weigh our packs? Yeah, they were about 35 pounds at the most. Yeah, I was going to say 30, like 35 pounds. Um, but that was for a long trip. Yes, that was like a four night trip, and it weighed like 35 pounds. Um, which is honestly really light and and then the more you eat the lighter your pack gets yes. so like your food and water it's gonna add more weight but yeah once you I mean at the end of it when we got out of the canyon I think it, I don't know it might have been like 28 or something pounds probably yeah, and then it uh, looks like Tiffany commented on here, I guess the rule of thumb is your pack should be about 20% of your body weight max, okay. so yeah. that might be a good rule of thumb to go by, oh. but then that all kind of depends on what kind of trip you're doing too. Sometimes you might have to muscle up and <laughs> yes. carry a little more weight and just know yeah. that it'll get lighter as you go. But Yeah, when Michael and I do it, he we split up the tent, so I'll, like, I'll carry the tent and the Steaks and then Michael will carry like the fly, the rain fly, and then the poles. So that also helps. Like if you go backpacking with someone and you're gonna be sleeping in the same tent, you can divvy up the supplies. So that's a big help. Uh, okay, let's see. Where am I? Okay, so let's talk about um, lights. So. Somehow, I don't know how we ended up with so many headlamps, but uh, lights. Um, headlamps are really great. So this is a black diamond headlamp. So the same brand as the black diamond gloves. Um, this is a really bright light, and these are really nice because you just put it, you put it on your head, and then your hands are free. So you can move it down. So if you're cooking and you need light um, facing the ground at night, then you can move it down. Or if you're walking in the middle of the night to 
say use the bathroom and you just need a light going forward, you can just um, push it up. But yeah, uh, this is a really great um, light to have when you're backpacking or camping. And then uh, these are not necessary, but they're really fun to have. I enjoy taking them with me on trips because I just had like having a little light in the tent at the end of the day. Um, this is my black diamond light here. So it's just a little battery powered lantern and it has these um, little metal handle looking things that come up. And let me show you in the tent what I do this. So I will just put this So I have like a little fabric loop up here and I just loop it up there and then I have a light for at night when I'm changing into my PJs. I can actually see and um, you know I'll use it for reading but it's just nice. It's a nice comforting thing to have but only take it if you have room for it but I mean it's small so you can stuff it in there. And then, um, and this is another one that I think is really cool because it can actually charge your phone. So it's a light and I mean, you, I can hang it up just like the black diamond one that I have. So it has different <laughs> modes. Um, and yeah, then, that's for charging yes. it and then you can charge your phone by plugging it in. Yep right there yeah so you can put another um, charger cord yes yeah, so that's handy because usually you take your cell phone for emergencies or to use as a camera so if you need to recharge it while you're out on a two or three day camping trip there you go yeah wagon tech so this was a gift and I don't know where they got it I think that was a wedding gift, actually. All right, so we got um, lights. Okay, so let's cover some first aid stuff. So first aid um, is really important. You always want to take a first aid kit with you. I have a couple different ones here. Uh, we have several first aid kits. Um, and you can put whatever you want in your first aid kit if uh, you know if you're worried about getting headaches while you're on the trip or stomach aches then um, you know go ahead and add uh, some Tylenol or like the Pepto-Bismol little pills and you can put them in I know that Walmart sells like little mini bags where you can put um, medicine in it so and you're able to write on the plastic bags what it is. So those are really great. Um, they'll fit in here. Uh, Band-Aids is always a great thing to also take. Oh look, here's one of those bags. So yeah, if you just get like these little bags, you can write what it is and then stuff it in here. Yeah, the Band-Aids, um, disinfectant wipes, um, or like little What are those? Those like wipes where it's more of a cream. The um, do you remember what that's called? Neosporin. Neosporin wipes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Tiffany mentioned earlier too that the first aid kit, a good thing to pack would be some mole skin if you end up with blisters, because yeah. uh, that's bound to happen while you're out on your trip. Yes, excellent point, Tiffany. Um, yeah, mole skin. I've seen friends use moleskin on nasty blisters so yes that's a really important thing to bring with you so yeah you'll um, in first aid kits when you get them in the store it'll say on the outside what's all in them like I said you can add stuff in there if you want you can even go out and buy like a small bag like the size of this or something like a little change bag and kind of create your own if you need extra room, extra stuff to take. Uh, also, 
uh, important is taking sunscreen. Oh, this is a really big bottle, so uh, you'll probably want to get um, the smaller uh, travel size bottles. I know they have like the travel size shampoo bottles that are empty. They have those at Walmart, so they kind of um, look like this. They're probably a little bigger, but you can use something smaller like this to put sunscreen in so that way it's not taking up so much room in your bag. So you're at least able to do that to do that with sunscreen. Um, you don't want to get a sunburn while you're out there in the back country. It would be really uncomfortable. Um, if you want, you can take aloe with you just in case. And you can do the same thing. Uh, put some aloe in a smaller container. Um, and then bug spray, of course. Which we can't put this in a smaller container, but you can buy small cans of this. And... Um, just to keep the bugs away from you. So yeah. Oh yeah, and this is also, um, and you all have probably seen this before, but it's like a repellent wristband. So you can wear this and it's supposed to repel mosquitoes. Yeah, they're not foolproof, but they help a little bit. Yeah. I think it's like more of a, like, to ease your mind. <laughs> you think it works, but you're not really sure if it works. <laughs> So that's all kind of first aid stuff. Okay, so next we're going to talk about keeping animals out of your campsite. Where's my water? Let me drink a water real quick. Okay, so keeping animals out of your campsite. This is dusty because we've never used it before. This is bear spray, by the way. So, <laughs> this is our bear spray. I've never used bear spray before, so I can't really tell you how it works. Um, besides just looking at the directions. But yes, you would use this if you have a um, intense encounter with a bear. <laughs> But if you do come across any wildlife, um, if they are just minding their own business and not really much of a threat to you, there's no reason to use this on that poor bear. <laughs> just let it do its thing. And um, But if you feel like you are in danger, then you'd want to use it. Yeah, and that's typically something you would just use in states that have grizzly bears that tend to be maybe a little more aggressive. Uh, that's the only time we've ever carried it is if we were out west in California, Montana, um, in states where there were grizzlies. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, we've never we've never come in contact with a bear on the trail. We've like seen moose. We've seen a lot of moose, but when we were out west, but. Um, and then we would see bears in a car. Michael saw a bear in town when he was going for a jog one morning in Durango. But Yeah, you know. yeah, and then, yeah, typically uh, black bears, like Tiffany was saying, they're almost like big raccoons. You definitely want to take them seriously, but yes. you can kind of shoo them away if they're trying to sneak in and take your food. And Yes, that's actually a park ranger told us that, <laughs> too, and, um, I think it was in California. He said if we uh, saw a bear like at our picnic table trying to eat our food, um, then just shoot it away like a raccoon, like it was no big deal. Yeah, because <laughs> so, yeah, he was saying the worst thing yeah. you can do is let them take your food because uh -huh. then they think they can do it all the time. Uh -huh. So he made it sound like they really weren't aggressive, but <laughs> they look like it. Um, so yeah, bear spray is something you can take with you. I know that some people, they will wear bells on their backpacks to kind of warn animals that they are on the trail. Um, we've never done that. We've heard mixed reviews about that. Some people think that it makes it worse because then you're letting the animals know you're there and the bells kind of get them um, curious about what that sound is and they follow the sound. But I, who knows? We've never tried it though. Um, but yeah, if you do come across a bear, I've just heard that um, 
and if you feel like you're in danger, also clapping your hands, making yourself look really big, um, and just being very loud and just um, kind of yelling at it to scare it off helps. Um, but that's only if it's, you know, coming towards you and it seems like it's being aggressive. But like I said, we don't have much experience with that because we haven't experienced it yet. Um, so we're going to talk about storing your food properly. Right here is our uh, bear bin. And let me see if I can open it without being on the floor. Okay. So these things are a little hard to open. You're going to store your any food. Ah, there we go. Just kind of have to take some practice. All right. So with this, if you have any kind of food, um, and also if you're going to be bringing, I meant to forgot to mention that if you're bringing any kind of bars like this, you're not going to bring the whole box. You're just going to bring however many bars you think you're going to need. So you would just throw a couple of your bars in there and then any food that you haven't eaten in there as well. You're also going to put your um, camp suds in there and your sunscreen, aloe, bug spray, anything that has a scent. You're going to put it in here because you want to keep it away from the bear and then you want to store it at least 200 feet away from your campsite. So 200 feet, they say that's like 60 to 80 adult steps. Um, yeah, but away from your campsite. So if a bear does smell it out and they're very curious about it and they want to play with it or any animal of that matter, then um, you know they're far enough away from you where you're not in any kind of danger. The mailman's coming right now. <laughs> I thought Yossi was going to go nuts. <laughs> he barks at the mailman. Yes, yeah, so then you just have your lid. You just screw it on. But yeah, it's a nice hard shell. Um, so I do want to say when you're backpacking, yes, you're going to be stinky or you're going to feel really gross and stinky. Um, do not take deodorant. That's just a waste of space. Um, who cares if you smell good or bad when you're backpacking? Um, don't bring like face wipes, shampoo, conditioner, um, body soap. You're not going to be taking a shower out in the backcountry. <laughs> just go stinky. I mean, um, you want to save room for food and water and other important supplies. All right. So if there's uh, any other types of animals in your uh, campsite, you just you wouldn't want to let them take your food or anything. It would be the no. same as bears. You just want right. to yeah, not feed any wildlife. Exactly. Yeah, don't feed any wildlife. They will drive you nuts. And a lot of places you will get in big trouble for it if you get caught. Um, that's a big no-no. And like I said before, wildlife, they have plenty of food out in the wilderness. Um, I mean, they have a whole buffet 24-7. They don't need us to feed them. So please don't feed them. Um, so if you don't have a bear bin, um, I, don't, I don't even know if I've noticed them in any of the stores, outdoor stores around here. Yeah, we don't have as many bears around here typically. Yeah, so we got that bear bin in California. But, um, so another option is, and I couldn't find our sack, the white one. Oh, is. yeah. But another option is to put, is to hang a bear bag. So, excuse me, I keep having to belch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So you can get one of these stuff sacks here, and you can put your um, food in here, and then uh, roll it up and clip it, and then you would hang this in a tree with some uh, hair cord. Um, maybe for another video we can do something like that. We won't be doing that today, but that's just another thing you can do with storing food or anything that has a scent.
you know, you just want to pick a limb that kind of overhangs uh, tall enough that animals can't get to it or yes. climb out to it. Yes, exactly. water uh, that's very important when you're backpacking um, so whenever I go on a backpacking trip um, even if it's just an overnight I take two of these these are called now jeans um, these hold uh, quite a bit of water I don't know if it has the readers on here but um, these are really great to have you can get these um, at Dick Sporting Goods in the outdoor store. Yeah, they're one liter each. One liter? Okay. So these are one liter each. So I take two of them, so I have two liters of water. Um, this is something else that we will take if you're going to an area where water is kind of scarce and you're not sure if you're going to have much water. Uh, you're going to be using water for a lot of things, for cooking, for cleaning, drinking. Most importantly, um, we will fill this up and put it in our bag and use this as water. We don't drink out of this, we just use it to fill up our now jeans when we run low. So, yeah. And uh, so, water, let's talk about drinking clean water. Um, when you're in the backcountry, and you're looking on the map or looking up the area that you're going to be hiking um, you want to see if there's streams nearby like a water source uh, that's an important thing to know about uh, one easy way to uh, make sure your water is clean because you just don't want to drink it straight out of the stream you might get um, sick from it um, it can if you drink just dirty water then you could possibly get diarrhea and get really sick and it would just be a very not fun trip. <laughs> so these are iodine tablets that you can get at Walmart and they sell them in some first aid kits I think because I just pulled it out of one of ours. So there's two of them and the directions are on the back here so you put Yes, so this is the one where you add two tablets to one liter of water. So two tablets to one of these, one of these Nalgene's, and then you um, shake it up, and then you wait 30 minutes. So it will um, clean the water, kill any kind of bad bacteria in the water, and um, it's going to turn your water like a orangey yellow or it's almost gonna look rusty kind of colored but um, yeah and it might taste a little funny so then that's when you add um, two tablets of this and then you shake it and you wait three minutes and it clears up the water so it's clear and um, kind of removes yeah the yeah. iodine taste yeah it removes the iodine taste um, still you're still gonna taste it a little bit but um, you know it's not so bad you can add a uh, packet of Gatorade like the Gatorade powder which looks you can buy like packets that are like in this kind of thing this kind of form and put in your water if you really can't stand the taste the taste doesn't bother me so that's one way of doing that and then another way and this is a little more time consuming well that is too because it takes like 30 minutes is this is this just takes more work this is a water pump there you go so i got this at a yard so i got really lucky with this because <laughs> these are kind of expensive but you have this hose it into the pump here and then you unscrew that part 
and these only work if you have a Nalgene bottle because it only fits the top of a Nalgene bottle. So you screw it in, you take this into the whole hose, and then um, I'm always going to get a bowl of water and pump it. But um, yeah, you just put it in the stream. You need to put it, um, you want to avoid putting it in like still water. Um, so you want to place it in the stream where the water's lightly flowing and then you just start pumping and the water comes through up through the hose into here and then it filters it for you. So, but it's, it takes a while to pump this. It's arm workout. But yeah, so that's another way of doing that. And then those are also a, a more expensive option as it's where yes. iodine is very cheap. Yes, that is a more expensive option. Good point. All right, so uh, let's talk about sleeping gear and shelter. So let me meet you back over at the tent. I might have to grab the phone charger. Ah, uh, okay. Here, take that. All right. All right, just hang in there, guys. Let me get my sleeping gear. I'm gonna show you a couple different sleeping bags. A um, couple different options for when, uh, depending on the weather, I mean. good we're still here okay all right so uh, sleeping gear um, as you see I have my tent set up can you you're good mm -hmm. all right I have my tent set up in the living room this is um, a marmot tent it's a two-person tent uh, this thing's been everywhere with me and Michael um, it can fit me and Michael and then our dog Yossi of course and, oh, I forgot one thing. And this is a uh, three-season tent? Yes, this is a three-season tent. It would typically have a rain fly. Yeah, I didn't put the rain fly on. But, so, um, first we'll talk about uh, a good sleeping pad. So this is the only sleeping pad that I have. And this is a Thermarest. Um, this thing is really awesome. It's, um, so it fills up with the air, but it also has a nice thick foam pad. Um, it packs down really small. Um, it takes me a little while to fold it or to roll it up because, um, it's so thick. But, yes. Keep, keeps you nice and warm, too. Yes, it does. It keeps you, um, insulated well keeps it off the cold ground. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever camped with an air mattress, but uh, that could work for, I mean, that's more of like a car camping thing or if you to like go to a campsite. Um, air mattresses really are not ideal for uh, backpacking, but um, that air mattress, air mattresses just don't keep you well insulated. You're gonna get cold when you're sleeping on them. So this is going to keep you warm underneath, um, and this is how we store ours. Uh, it's better to store a mattress like this, um, just inflated, and we just put it underneath the bed. Um, you don't want to store it rolled up for several weeks. Um, I don't really know what it does to it, but I've just always heard rule of thumb, you're supposed to store Store it like this. <laughs> yeah, so. it compresses the foam that's inside and then it never really fully expands out like it should. Okay. Same way with uh, storing like sleeping bags. Yes. Yeah, so it's nice when I have you here, Michael, because you finish my sentences for me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know I had this one um, and, you know, I had this stored and not properly, but. This is um, a, so it's 
so this is a Deuter brand. Um, this was one of the first nice sleeping bags that I got. Um, it's a very, very light sleeping bag. Um, so this is great for uh, summer camping in Kentucky. It gets really hot in Kentucky in the summertime. And um, there's like, there's no down feathers in here. So it keeps me nice and cool in the summer. Uh, this is a mummy sack. So as you can see, it's um, pretty, I mean, it's small. And then it gets really narrow down here at the feet. But yeah, that's considered a mummy sack sleeping bag but you press it is really small and uh, it's very lightweight and um, on here on the bag it will tell you um, the temperature range so I think this one I feel like since this is German they like write things no it's like, in Celsius it weird. yeah which I think the temperature range is maybe it's good for when it's maybe like 60 degrees out or 65 degrees, but I can't remember. I'm trying to remember what my brother told me when I bought it. But so that's a good summer sleeping bag. And then um, this is a good like uh, fall sleeping bag when it's not really freezing out it's still like pretty warm but it's getting pretty chilly at night um, this is a marmot here and so this is a good bag for so it's a little thicker and, uh, that one goes down to 30 degrees yeah so this one goes down to 30 degrees uh, this is really cool it has like a little pocket in the inside here so I know that I will put my like headlamp in here at night and I'll sleep with my headlamp in this pocket. So if I have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, um, I know where to find my headlamp. Okay. So that's a great sleeping bag. Um, so this is the proper way to store your sleeping bags. You can buy these uh, nice nets. Um, I'm pretty sure I got this at Mike's Hike and Bike in Richmond, Kentucky. It's an outdoor store. And you just stuff it in here. And that way the sleeping bag stays nice and new and you know, it can puff out, air out, so it doesn't compress it or damage it in any way. And then this is my favorite bag that I've used so many times. Uh, Michael got me this bag, and this is my, this is my zero degree down mummy sleeping bag, um, and this is a Mountain Hardware uh, brand, so there's the brand right there, and this has a lot of um, down feathers in it, it is super warm. Um, I use this thing all the time when I go uh, backpacking out west because it gets cold there at night. So it's great for going out there. And um, here's the stuff sack that it goes in. So surprisingly, that sleeping bag fits in there. And you can cinch it down, put this on top, buckle it. You can cinch it down, make it really small. Yeah, it probably gets to the size of about a volleyball or yes. so. Yeah, so these things, so that's a great, so I mean, this is another great purchase um, for you to make, uh, you know, these sleeping bags are more pricier, but um, they're great for backpacking and they're going to save you room, space in your backpack, and you're going to be like so much more warmer and comfortable at night. Oh, where's my pillow? Oh, yes. So, pillows. Um, it's always really exciting when you find a pillow that you like <laughs> to sleep with uh, when you go backpacking. So, this is one that we just recently bought that we really like. Um, it's nice because the little bag 
that you stuff it in is attached to it, so you don't lose the bag. And this one, it's got, okay, there he is, I'm screwed. So it's got some, like, a few little feathers in there to make it um, a little more comfy. So you just blow it up. You can blow it up as much as you want, um, make it as firm as you want, or as soft, but there's your nice uh, camp pillow. So, yeah. Oh yeah, and then you had a question on here about uh, removing the iodine taste again, um, which that was those neutralizing tablets that come with the packets. You can add the neutralizing tablets that'll get rid of the taste and then you can hide it with just those uh, small flavor pouches as well that you can buy at the store. Yes, like um, Gatorade or probably, I'm sure Kool-Aid makes little uh, pouches that you can put in there. So yeah, and then it packs down real small, like so. Yeah, cool. All right, so that's our sleeping equipment. Um, okay, so let's talk about backpacks real quick. Whew, I'm tired. <laughs> right. So, um, this was one of my first backpacks that I got, like, nicer ones. I used to use my dad's, um, external metal frame backpacks from, like, the 70s. Um, this is a internal frame. So it's more comfortable, um, it's more airy, uh, it's more breathable on your back. And this is the Deuter brand. Uh, this, and down here it will tell you how many liters, so basically how much it'll hold. So this part, this part of the pack holds 45 liters. So all that in there will hold 45 liters. And then it also says plus 15. So the plus 15 is for just the brain. So the top part of your backpack is your brain. And then you can put um, things. So when you go, when you're packing your bag, you wanna put things that are easily accessible in your brain. So um, people like to put uh, rain jackets up here in the brain um, in case it's going to be raining and they need to grab it out of here real quick. Um, I will put my rain jacket or any kind of snacks that I'm going to have that day if I need to get a quick snack I'll put it up there. Um, you know just important things like that that you think you're going to need during the day while you're hiking on the trail because if you put that kind of stuff at the bottom of your pack then you're gonna have to pull everything out trying to find it. So pack smart. Um, when packing your backpack, you want to make sure you put the more bulkier stuff at the bottom. So um, if you're like sleeping bag, sometimes I have to, when we take this big thing, our bear bin, I'll have to put <laughs> that at the bottom because it seems like that's the only way to fit it in there. Um, I wouldn't be putting that on top of all my stuff. Sometimes I can get like my sleeping bag in there first and then that, but um, you wanna make sure that you pack everything in there where your backpack is able to sit um, upright by itself. So that is, um, and this is a little bit of a smaller pack, so I would take this with me in the summertime because I'm not going to be taking as many um, clothes and I'm not going to be taking like warm jackets and things with me. But for my longer trips, I take this and I haven't had this for 
a really long time, but uh, this is a great brand. This is Osprey, and um, they have awesome backpacks. I have a smaller backpack, like a day pack, just an Osprey. Um, this is a 65 liter pack. So, um, and all backpacks have these cool compartments. So, on the side here, you can put your Nalgene, and it has it on the other side as well. And then, here's my brain at the top. On the inside, I have another compartment. I have a trash bag in there, so I, can, I guess from last time. And then there's um, all kinds of cool stuff in here. So I'll like stuff my clothes down here in this pocket. And then I'll put my sleeping bag down there in the backpack. You can put stuff in the front here that you need to get to easily. And then the bottom here unzips. And you can even put more clothes down in here. So this backpack has a lot of room, a lot of space. And I'll go ahead and just put it on for you. So when you're fitting them, um, I've always had someone in the store help me. They help me find the right size and everything. Yeah, that's where going to a good outdoor store, a place like yes. REI, those experts can definitely help you find the right fit. Yes, so um, you want it to be comfortable. This is a really comfortable pack. I love it. I um, also have like a little fanny pack here that I can unzip and put other small things there, chapstick, maybe my phone to take pictures. And then, yeah, it's on both sides. But yeah, you want it to, so my waist, uh, so the waist belt is resting like right at like my hip bones on the top of my hip bones. And it's like, and this buckle is like right below my belly button. So that's where it's most comfortable. And um, you can use, there's different ways to cinch it down. To make it more comfortable on your shoulders um, it's really different when you have a lot of weight in here so you can just mess with the straps see what's comfortable um, but yes so that's what it looks like I'm sorry I don't have it all packed up but yeah I know but from backpacking with you that thing is usually three times that size so <laughs> yes <laughs> it, it expands a lot yeah and the cool thing of this one is it has a whistle on the front. Yes, he likes it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yes, uh, this is a great brand. I would say if you want to get a nice backpack, go with Osprey. And go to um, the outdoor store in Lexington, which is, we still can't remember. We're so bad. <laughs> yeah, definitely nice to support your local outdoor yes, stores though. Support your local outdoor stores. Okay, so um, I'm sorry. I try to keep my videos short, but it's like impossible because there's so much to cover. But um, last thing that I just want to go over are um, some other cool places that you can go backpacking. So I just wanted to share with you some names of places that Michael and I have been to before. So if you have a uh, piece of paper and a pen, please write these down because you will not be disappointed. Um, but you can also go back and uh, hear what the names of the places were. So um, the first place that you should at least research or look at pictures of um, is Chicago Basin, which is in the San Juan National Forest. That's in Southwest Colorado. Um, so that's Chicago Basin. It's really amazing. Uh, you do, we had to take a train ride to get there. Um, you ride the Silverton 
Is it Silverton Durango train? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Durango and Silverton narrow gauge railroad. Yes, so you ride that train, they literally drop you off in the middle of the forest and then you get on the trail and so then they leave you because everybody else goes to Silverton and then um, you hop on the trail to go to Chicago Basin and it's a very wide open beautiful area um, there are 14ers there for those of you that have never heard of 14ers those are 14,000 uh, foot mountains that you can uh, hike up or climb up so if you've ever heard of Pikes Peak that is considered a 14er um, the only difference with Pikes Peak is you can drive to the top of it, but you can also hike to the top. Um, and I think there's like a donut shop at the top of Pikes Peak. I've never been up there because I like to go on the 14ers where you like have to work really hard and hike to get to the top. But um, yeah, Pikes Peak, Pikes Peak is one that is well known. But there are four 14ers in the Chicago Basin area. Um, it's Eolus, uh, and then what's see the there's sunshine or sh sunlight. Sunlight Peak and, um, and North Eolus and Wyndham Peak. That's right. So yes, check that area out. So that's one. <laughs> um, Canyon Lands National Park in Utah is a amazing place. Um, it's more of a secluded park. There's not a big lodge there. So if you want to get away from the crowd and really get out into nature, go to Canyon Lands. Um, it is really cool. You will not be disappointed. Uh, that's where Michael proposed to me. So that place is really special to me. And he proposed on April Fool's Day, which <laughs> I still think is really funny. <laughs> but uh, yes, try that place out. Um, the Pacific Crest, the Pacific Crest Trail in California, that's Northern California, right? Uh, close to Highway 1. Um, and I actually have uh, just some pictures I can share with you of that, just real quick. But this is um, the Pacific Crest Trail. So you're hiking along the um, seashore you can see a lot of wildlife there's um, seals that are sunbathing on the beach which is really fun so yes I mean it is gorgeous Yeah, it's a really cool area and then you know we always see this kind of stuff in the stores but you can go there and you can actually see it growing out in nature but those are just a few of the pictures um and then uh some local places there's big south fork um in tennessee um i also think it goes into kentucky a little bit that's a good place and then of course daniel boone national forest um is a great place to to go backpacking so research some of those places um you know if you have any questions please uh, contact me you can contact the um, camp email or uh, my email if you have any questions about cool backpacking places uh, my personal email is lgruen at gswrc.org and um Yes, I'm pretty sure that's all I got. Yeah. So, um, I'll go back and watch the video and make sure that all your questions got answered. Um, thank you for joining me today. I'll be back on here again Thursday for the Junior Stain Fit Badge. Y'all have a great day.